Hello everyone, I'm David Pilston, CEO of Save Our Seabirds. Thank you for joining us this evening. We really miss seeing you on our Wild Bird Learning Center, and we hope that we'll be able to reopen very soon. In the meantime, we thought it might be fun to bring a little bit of the Wild Bird Learning Center to you, and also to give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes of what goes on at Save Our Seabirds every day. But first, we have a very exciting announcement to share with you. For the first time in the history of Save Our Seabirds, we now have an actual licensed veterinarian in charge of our hospital. Her name is Dr. Maria Passarelli, and you'll get to meet her at the end of this video. With Dr. P on board, we'll now be able to do a lot of procedures in-house that we never could do before. That should really help improve our already impressive success rate with sick and injured birds. Also, with Dr. P on board, we will be able to really elevate the level of our educational programs in our hospital to help create the next generation of avian veterinarians, but also my personal goal to help create the next generation of environmentalists. So please stay tuned for that uh, interview at the end of this video. But now we'd like to take you on a little behind the scenes tour of A Day in the Life of Save Our Seabirds, narrated by our very own board members, Ann Anderson and Jim Curtis. Enjoy. The sun is rising over our little corner of paradise, a paradise we share with many other living creatures, including the spectacular and fascinating birds we see all around us. Right behind Save Our Seabirds, the brown pelicans are just waking up. And at SOS, our senior hospital technician, Jonathan, is the first to arrive. Checking the after-hours drop-off boxes, he finds that no new patients have arrived overnight. Well, that's good news. That is good news. And now I see that Freckles, the wood stork, has stopped by. Freckles is a former patient who often visits, hoping to swipe a fish or two when feeding rounds begin. Jonathan is starting off the day by checking on our patients in the big wing section of our hospital, where our larger patients are kept. He's moving a laughing gull from its overnight cage to a clean one, and he's making a note on the gull's chart. Keeping detailed records is very important. And next door in the kitchen, Tara is preparing food for our 120 resident birds. Birds that cannot be released back into the wild are given permanent homes here, and they are very well fed. First up, fish for the fish eaters. SOS goes through an astounding 18 tons of fish a year to feed patients and permanent residents. That's a lot of fish. In the triage room, where our patients are treated, Jonathan is examining and putting a new dressing on a white ibis, who came to us with a severe wing wound. Such a beautiful bird. And now Jonathan is checking the condition of a sweet little palm warbler that crashed into a window. Flying into clear windows is a common hazard for birds, but people can help making windows more visible to birds to break the illusion that they can fly through can help prevent such collisions. Back in the kitchen, Tara is preparing food puzzles for some of the birds of prey. This form of enrichment makes the birds do a little work and a little problem solving to get their food. Just like humans, it's important for these intelligent birds to exercise their brains. The kitchen is always busy, but it's even more busy during the baby bird season. Each year we receive dozens of baby birds that have been knocked out of their nests and require intensive, sometimes round-the-clock care and very specialized feeding. There's an emergency in the hospital. A royal turn has been brought in with a fishing lure hooked through its beak and its tongue. The bird likely saw this fish-like lure in the water and mistook it for food. Being hooked or entangled in fishing line is one of the most common causes of injury we see at SOS. You can tell Jonathan has had a lot of experience with this. He carefully cuts off the barbed end of the hook so he can pull it out without further tearing the bird's mouth. Proper disposal of fishing gear and care while casting can help prevent such injuries. And if you ever see a bird tangled in fishing line, please call us at Save Our Seabirds. Speaking of injuries, in the office, operations manager Jocelyn is taking a call about a pelican in trouble. 
She is dispatching our expert rescuer, Dave Thomas, one of our dedicated volunteers. This poor brown pelican has been stuck in that channel marker for several days. It is emaciated and weak. Look how expertly Dave captures it to bring it back to SOS for healing, rehab, and hopefully release. The best possible outcome. This is why SOS exists. Since the start of the pandemic, SOS has rescued and treated over 900 birds in distress. The birds definitely still need our help. Meanwhile, down on the bird walk, Jonathan is checking on our resident birds. His first stop is to say good morning to Gabby, our umbrella cockatoo. While we do not take in exotic birds anymore, and we strongly discourage owning any kind of a bird as a pet, we still have about a dozen that were surrendered to us years ago because their owners could no longer take care of them. Now he's over to the pelican habitat. There's Sweet Pea, SOS's official spokes pelican. Sweet Pea is a brown pelican who was born with a condition called angel wing, so she cannot fly properly, but she loves people, and it looks like she would like to give us a tour to meet some of her feathered friends. Hello, Sweet Pea, let's go. How exciting. Many people don't realize how many birds live here at Save Our Seabirds. But SOS is not a zoo. All of these wild birds, including Sweet Pea, started in the SOS hospital, and each has a story. They're at SOS because although they feel great, they couldn't survive in the wild. Here they have a good life thanks to the SOS staff and volunteers. Here's just what you were talking about. Every single day, every single habitat is thoroughly cleaned, just like Liliana is doing now. Now let's go meet some of our permanent resident birds. First up, Sweet Pea's neighbors, the Anhingas and double-crested cormorants. These birds actually swim underwater to catch their food. Because of that, they often get entangled in discarded fishing line or are hooked by lures. Even worse, they are at high risk of being struck by motorboats. Sweet Pea seems fascinated by the great egret. Such beautiful birds. This majestic bird and other wading birds were almost hunted to extinction in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Their beautiful feathers were highly prized for use in fashionable women's hats. Fortunately, they are now protected by federal law. Well, thank goodness for that. No feathers for me. Now let's go visit the Sandhill Cranes. Did you know that two of our resident Sandhill Cranes, Lady and Peeps, serve as surrogate parents for injured or orphaned Sandhill Crane colts? They teach the colts important Sandhill Crane skills, including how to forage for food. Look at the legs on that little one. I can see why Sandhill Crane chicks are called colts, and what incredible teachers Lady and Peeps are. Yes, they do a great job. And when the time comes, our rehabilitated Sandhill Crane Colts can be united with their doting parents again, back in the wild where they belong. Here comes Rachel with a special delivery for Stella and Stanley, the black vultures on the bird walk. Stanley and Stella were both hit by cars while scavenging by the side of the road. It's time for their lunch. Since black vultures are scavengers, they like to eat almost any kind of raw meat that you can think of. Look at them tear at those bags. In the wild, birds are constantly searching for food, making new discoveries, and actively interacting with their environment. Enhancing our resident birds' quality of life by adding excitement and variety to their daily routines is so important to us. Speaking of variety, let's go visit our owls. We have four different species of owls living at SOS right now. And these are the largest, great horned owls. These owls were struck by cars as they chased their prey across the road. One has a blind eye, while the others have a dislocated shoulder and wing injuries. Great horned owls are the most common owls of the Americas. They are so strong that a three pound owl can pick up and carry away a nine pound animal. And by the way, those are not ears that you see, but merely tufts of feathers on their heads. 
We can help prevent injuries to birds of prey and scavenger birds by keeping trash off of roadsides. Looks like Sweet Pea wants to go visit Armando. And here he is, Armando, our crested caracara. Armando was brought to us after he and his mate were shot by a careless hunter. His wing was shattered and, sadly, his mate was killed. There goes Sweet Pea, heading off towards the Education Center. That's one of her favorite places. Yes, this area is usually full of kids of all ages doing activities and learning a lot about birds and the environment. It's empty now, but don't worry, it will come to life again soon. We look forward to welcoming back all of our visitors and our dedicated volunteers who help us feed the birds and keep these grounds immaculate. I think Sweet Pea is ready to go home. She's had a long day. Thanks for the tour, Sweet Pea. It was so interesting to get a peek inside the hospital and I feel like there are so many more stories to hear about on SOS's Bird Walk. So true. But in the end, our goal is always to return rehabilitated birds to the wild where they belong, to live out their lives in this beautiful paradise we all call home. With your help, we can continue to keep them safe and help protect them from future harm. Another beautiful day comes to an end. But our important work on behalf of our fine feathered friends is never really done. That's why we recently extended the lease on our facility for up to an additional 40 years. That's right, 40 years. And that's why we also recently launched our first ever capital campaign. The goals of that campaign are to completely overhaul our rehabilitation facilities, to build a beautiful and functional entry building, which we do not have now, and to build an indoor education center, which we do not have now. And we'd also like to build a highly educational bird-themed play space right in the middle of our facility. Imagine hundreds of school children taking classes and wandering around our bird walk and playing in our playscape and learning without even realizing they're learning, helping to create the next generation of environmentalists. And that's why we also recently hired our first ever avian veterinarian. Once again, her name is Dr. Maria Passarelli, and I'm pleased and proud to introduce her to you now. Hey, Dr. P, how are you? It's going very well, thank you. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am from Hanover, Pennsylvania. I went to school at the University of Pennsylvania, and after graduation, I did a year-long internship in avian and exotic animal medicine in Houston, Texas, before moving to Florida. I have three birds of my own, a budgie named Dandelion, and two zebra finches named Marco and Polo. And what attracted you to Save Our Seabirds? Well, I chose to live in the state of Florida because I was fascinated by Florida wildlife, especially birds. I initially worked in private practice and only saw wildlife on the side, but I always hoped there would be an opportunity to do more with wildlife. And then came Save Our Seabirds. Um, wild bird medicine has always been my passion. You know, I was definitely the bird girl in vet school. So uh, working at Save Our Seabirds is definitely the ultimate dream job for me. How's it going so far? It's going very well. Uh, certainly the pandemic has been a challenge here, just like everywhere else, but the staff here is phenomenal in their knowledge and commitment to caring for the birds. And together we continue to provide the best care and medicine for our birds despite the pandemic challenges. What are your long-term goals for Save Our Seabirds? Well, definitely one of the biggest long-term goals is the implementation of the Come Fly With Us capital campaign. Of course, it's been delayed due to the pandemic, so we are all extremely excited to move forward with this project. It's going to benefit our birds tremendously, both our residents and our wild bird patients. These new facilities are going to improve our capabilities to treat and rehabilitate wild birds, which is therefore going to improve our success rate in releasing healthy birds back to the wild. Um, additionally, it will help us achieve another goal of ours, which is to improve our educational outreach to the community. Well, thank you, Dr. P. We are just so thrilled to have you as a member of the Save Our Seabirds family. As we always say, our goal is to create a sustainable organization that can continue to fulfill our important mission to rescue, rehabilitate, release, and educate for generations to come. If you think about the thousands of birds that we have already saved over the years, and consider average rates of reproduction for those birds, there could be well over a million birds out there that would not exist today 
if not for Save Our Seabirds. Not to mention the children of all ages that have learned about birds and their environment through our many educational programs. That's a very real, tangible impact. If you would like to help, please visit our website, give us a call, or text the word SEABIRDS to 44321. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you soon in our Wild Bird Learning Center.